Hi guys, welcome to class. I'm Miss Monica. And I'm Miss Maya. <laughs> and we're going to be teaching you about your senses and how they help you with your brain and muscle movement. So first you have your smell and then your touch and your taste and your vision and your hearing. All of these go to your brain. And I'll give you an example about your touch. For example, if there was a hot stove, you would see if it's warm by maybe putting your hand over the water and then, oh, if it's too hot, then I'm gonna use a mitt. And then you would use your mitt to make sure that you don't burn your hand. But another example would be if it was cold, then you wouldn't have to use your mitt and you could just use your bare hands. So now Miss Maya is gonna tell you the process of these senses. So all of these senses go up to your brain and then your brain does a lot of different kinds of thinking and then it's gonna send a message out to your body and it go, reaches over to your muscles and it will tell your muscles, do I need to contract? Which means you're gonna create movement or does it need, doesn't need to move. So if it does need to move, it'll be moving, it'll go to movement. So if that stove is hot, maybe you accidentally touch it and you need to move your hand. So your brain will tell your muscles to move. Um, and then sometimes when you're doing movement, like you will have to either stop and you won't do any more movement, but sometimes if you're doing something, your brain will need more information. So you'll go back from the, your movement to your senses and you'll start all over again. So maybe you need to hear something again or you need to taste something again to be able to go through the same process. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Hey, Amy, so I heard you were taking motor behavior this semester. What's that class all about? It's a great class, totally recommend. Um, we learn about motor skills and how your brain interprets everything. So one way is proprioception, which is like in your ear and like your balance. Another one is internal, so it tells you when you're hungry or when you're in pain. And then another one is um, your external receptors. And so that's with your vision, your smell, your sounds, what you touch and all that stuff. And you know, an example of that is like, either like you're walking on ice or like skating on ice. And as you're skating, you're learning to get that feedback and it travels to your brain and then goes down to your muscles. And so you're learning how to correct yourself. Another way is like just throwing a pitch and you get your feedback afterwards. And so you throw it and you just perceive it, and then your body recognizes what you've done after you've done your friend. So yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. Hey, can you tell me about motor behavior and sensing? Sure, Dr. Lippman. So first you have a bunch of different receptors in your body. You have cutaneous receptors, such as muscle, like Golgi tendon organs, which detect tension in your muscles. You have muscle spindles which detect muscle length and you also have proprioception which is in your ear and kind of recognizes where your body is in space and those all travel through afferent nerves to your brain where they cross over from an inner neuron and go travel down to the muscles with an efferent nerve and that causes your muscles to contract and produce movement and with these you can either have open loop control or closed loop control. Open loop control is where you have your command center which is the brain that generates an action plan but it cannot be modified during the movement because the movement is often happening too fast and too quick such as in discrete skills or closed environments. Um, but in open or closed loop control you can modify the movement throughout because you're getting feedback constantly and you're getting, um, you're able to like reference to your desired goal and then that sends an error signal back to the brain to be able to modify the movement and make a change. Good job.